friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. I had a ton of requests for this video today on how to make a simple Christmas stocking. I'll take you step by step. While you watch this video, I wanna know what your most favorite thing that you've ever gotten in a Christmas stocking was, the worst thing you ever got in a Christmas stocking was, and how about the most bizarre or the weirdest thing that you've ever gotten in a stocking before? The best Christmas gift I ever got in a stocking was probably my iPhone. <laughs> and every year, my sweet husband, he keeps upgrading me. So it's the gift that keeps on giving, I guess. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what you all have gotten in your stockings before. Enough talking already. Let's get busy making some scrappy Christmas stockings. To get my pattern, all I did was grab an old stocking out of my Christmas decoration stash and I traced it. And then I added a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And then I also traced the cuff and added a seam allowance there. The one major tip or note that I could give you on the cuff is most of the time on stockings, there is a half inch narrowing or tapering of the seam allowance toward the heel side of the stocking. And that's so the top part, when you fold it down, it's not real super tight around your stocking. It's nice and loose. The other thing to take note is which way you want your stocking to hang, wherever it's going to hang. What I mean by that is which way, like the toe is pointing, the toe area, it could go to the left or to the right. So you wanna make sure when you connect it that you connect that cuff with that seam toward the back, toward the heel. So I hope that makes some sense for you. Now, I just went ahead and took the measurements of my stocking in case you needed to know those if you wanted to try it in rough sketchers if you didn't have one to trace. And this is such a simple shape that you could do a quick Google search and print out any pattern online too. So it's pretty straightforward. I cut my fur cuff out on the fold and being mindful of that taper. Now I could have chosen between either side because both my sides were really nice on my fur. I had that textured side and then I had the furry side. So I decided on the texture for this one. And then you'll need one piece of fabric for the inside front of your stocking. And you'll need one piece of batting that goes on top of that. I'm laying the pattern on there so you can see my pieces were just bigger than my stocking because I'm not going to cut those just yet into the stocking shape. And then I cut the fabric for the back of my stocking in a festive print. And I had a lot of this particular print, so that was perfect. And then you'll need to gather up all of your Christmas fabric scraps. Here I just put mine in piles of red and green, and the back pile there had a lot of lighter colors in it. Now I first picked out a focal center that I wanted for my stocking, which was this saying that said Merry Christmas on the front, because I thought that was really neat to see that when you first look at the stocking. And then I just keep building off of this main focal print. And I'm going to grab this red and see how that looks first. And then uh, if I think it looks okay, then I'm just going to take it right to the sewing machine right there and just sew them right together. And I'm going to press after each time. I think pressing after each time that we sew makes for nice, neat work and it keeps everything nice and flat. So you can see here, I went ahead and added two pieces together because I needed a bigger piece to fit on top of that red. And so I just connected those together and then I connected it to the red. I referred back to my template many times just to see where I wanted that Merry Christmas to be if I wanted it at a certain angle. And that was telling because that told me which way I wanted to build more on which side. You can also trim after you've added a few pieces. You don't have to trim it right away. Um, sometimes it's better to wait to trim it because then you can really see what you have. 
and you can trim it at a certain angle if needed or whatnot. Isn't that stripe, darling? Oh my word, I love it. I knew I wanted to incorporate that, that red candy stripe in this stocking somewhere. So you see, it's really handy to have those few piles right next to you at the sewing machine with your iron so that you can just kind of create and build as you go. That's one of my favorite parts about scrappy quilting. You make it up as you go. It's it's just really therapeutic. I mean, honestly, I, I, I do love scrappy quilting. Now I could have also cut out the shape of the stocking on a piece of muslin or something and use that to actually sew my scrappy pieces on. I used that method when we did the scrappy uh, crumb forest video and that works nicely too. And I had thought about doing it for this one, but I really didn't want to waste another piece of fabric. So that's why I did it this scrappy way. So that's just another possibility for you if you didn't want to keep laying it on top of your template. Once all your scrappy pieces are connected, you'll take it over to your cutting table and lay it on top of your template. Pop a couple pins in, flip it over so you're looking at the back side, and if all of your scrappy pieces are covering that template, then you'll just cut it right out. And then flip it over and look at that. Doesn't it look darling? Take the two front pieces, the one inside fabric and the batting, and lay your stocking directly on top of that in the center somewhere. And then you're going to pop a bunch of pins in it. We are preparing to put some quilting on this stocking, and it's going to look so cute, and it's going to make these prints pop and give it a ton of texture. Everyone should be able to put these lines on their stocking for quilting. We're not going to do free motion. It's just simple quilting with a regular sewing foot. You'll just pick out one of the fabrics that's in your stocking and just make some simple lines about a quarter inch or an eighth an inch away from each other. And that's all I did was just pick that snowflake pattern and just make some lines in it. Now you see here the batting, how much larger it is, and that's a good thing because sometimes when you're quilting on something, you want to go outside of what you're quilting on so you can come back around, and that's not going to end up in the end project, so it's really nice to have the batting larger than what you're quilting. The next thing I wanted to quilt was that Merry Christmas. I wanted to make it pop out. So I just did a few wavy lines following the curve of how the Merry Christmas was written on the fabric. Now you notice here, I do lift up a lot on my presser foot because that's how you're going to maneuver around when you have a regular sewing foot when you wanna change directions. Now if I was free motion quilting, I'd have free range and I could go anywhere, but when you're doing this technique and you really don't know how to free motion quilt, this is a great beginner thing for you to do. And I want you to notice too on this Merry Christmas, even though I used white thread, I'll show you here in a sec, it still really was noticeable and popped right up out and made really nice texture on this stocking. And here again, I'm just putting some lines right inside of the stripe. It's really a ton of fun to put texture within your quilt project. I mean, you can just literally do anything. You could do wavy lines if you wanted. I mean, it's just really a ton of fun. Here you can see I crisscrossed some lines. And now the next thing and final thing I'm going to do is do a stay stitch almost, if you will, around the entire stocking, tacking all pieces together on the edges. So this is what I have so far. And once everything looks good, I'm checking it all out. There's the back of the front of the stocking. <laughs> That's gonna be the inside. And then this is the front, of course. I'm going to pink around the entire stocking. Now, if you don't have pinking shears, don't worry about it. You can simply just cut it like normal with a regular pair of scissors or rotary cutter, and then you can actually do a zigzag stitch around the entire stocking so that way things don't fray. Next, I'm going to take the back of my stocking with the wrong side facing up, and I'm going to outline my finished 
front part of my stocking. And I'm just going to use a Sharpie, really, that's all I did. And then I pinked around the entire stocking. If you don't have pinking shears again, you're just going to cut it like normal with your rotary cutter or a regular pair of scissors. Now it's time to connect that quilted top to the back of your stocking. You're going to lay right sides together and pop a few pins in so that things don't get shifted when we get to the sewing machine. And then you're just going to sew a quarter inch around the entire stocking, being sure to cover up that initial stay stitch that you made around that front quilted portion. Now don't sew across the top of the stocking, otherwise you're going to close things up and we're not gonna be able to put anything in it, right? <laughs> Believe me, I've done stuff like that, so um, yeah, make sure that stays open. Now at this point, if you didn't have pinking shears to cut around your stocking, this is where you would do a zigzag around the entire stocking after you did the straight stitch around it. And be sure to give it a good press all the way around, making sure that all the seams are nice and pushed out. Now it's time to put on the fur cuff. Now since I want that textured side on the outside, I'm going to put right sides together, which is textured print to textured print. And then I'm going to sew down that side seam a quarter inch, and you see how that's narrowed down. And once it's all sewn, make sure that that seam is on the heel side. Turn your cuff right side out, just like you see me doing here. And then you're going to shove it inside of the stocking. Now you want the narrow side to be the side that you're going to sew on that heel side. So that narrow side is to the left. And then I'm going to pop some pins in and take it over to the sewing machine and sew about a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around connecting the cuff to the stocking. Now you can see there I'm easing it in a little bit because there was a little bit of stretch to my minky and so I was just accounting for that. And then you back stitch and then they're both connected and you can see the seams on the outside because we're going to be folding that cuff over on top of the stocking and the inside is where the nice seam is where people are gonna see. For some reason, my cuff had more length to it than what I wanted. It was covering up a lot of the prints, so I actually cut off about an inch or so off of the end of that cuff. So if you find that happens to you, just lay it out after you've already sewn it and just chop it off. In order to hang my stocking, I had some velvet ribbon and I took about 10 and a half inches and put right sides together, sewed them together, and then flipped them right side out and connected those two pieces together right there. And then I just kind of laid it inside of my stocking on the seam side, popped a pin in it where I figured I wanted how much, you know, how much ever velvet I wanted sticking out. And then I just simply sewed it straight across in two different places though. I lifted up and then went up the stocking a little bit and sewed it there, reinforcing it. Because if you're hanging your stocking and putting a lot of stuff in it for Christmas morning, you don't want it to, you know, come undone. Now you can also sew that hang tag inside of the seam allowance. So that's another option for you. It's always fun when you can personalize one of your sewing projects. My machine does simple letters and whatnot, so I went ahead and put, you know, the sewing channel on this one, but on the other ones I did put the year 2021, or you could put somebody's name on there. Um, it's, it's really nice when you can do that. But all I did was take a piece of batting and a piece of scrap fabric and put the name on there, and then I, pinned it on where I wanted it, off to the side there I thought was really cute. And you wanna make sure you pin it because sometimes things can really get out of whack. So you're going to open up your cuff to make sure that you don't sew on the actual stocking. And I'm just going to follow along the line that I initially made when I tacked the two pieces together. With the minky and the batting and the fabric, it gets kinda of thick, so just take your time. 
and then you end up with this darling stocking when you're all done and it's personalized and it's ready for gift giving and ready to stuff as full as you can get it. <laughs> I wanted to mention too that I used everything that was in my stash so I didn't have to purchase anything new for this project. So I bet you if you looked hard enough you could find all the things to make brand new stockings for all of your family members. Wouldn't that be so darling? Tell me in the comments, what was the weirdest thing or the best thing or the worst thing you've ever received in your Christmas stocking? Let me know down in those comments. Wishing you a Merry Christmas. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, Take care.